Oh my God, you guys, social media is just going crazy with all of this COVID-19 information. Whether it be from your crazy uncle or from a news outlet, I'm sure many of you are either frustrated or scared or confused. Some of you may be concerned about the pandemic itself, like whether you or a loved one may get sick. Some of you may be more concerned about the economic impact that it's going to have or even looking at the conspiracy theories behind this thing, which, you know what, to each their own, we were worried about something. For me, this thing has been affecting our retirement savings. So yeah, it's pretty frustrating. And I am like semi-concerned about how this is going to impact us economically but one thing it has taught me especially with the self-isolating thing and like taking things back to a basic level again is how much we actually rely on our current economic climate to survive go about our jobs we go about our days doing this nine to five survival rat race grind yet we take for granted these things as simple as food water a roof over our head and our communities We've lost the sense of community, even though we live in the largest society that humanity has ever established. So being in quarantine and seeing our stock market slip and watching the world poop itself really kind of makes you think. Because you have the time, you've got the space, you're probably in isolation for two weeks. Many of you are. And it puts things into perspective. What is it in life that truly kind of matters? Let me know which position you guys are in. Comment below. I want to know whereabouts you guys are in the world. What's kind of happening in your societies. And the kinds of things that you may be concerned with. I really want to know because I care about you guys. So for me, New Zealand hasn't quarantined yet. However, we're probably heading in the direction and we have a couple of kind of sanctions up already when it comes to gathering in a large crowd but if it so happens that we are going to quarantine I can really almost guarantee that I'll be pumping out heaps of videos so that you guys can watch it while you guys are in quarantine because what else is there to do and two I would love for James to come and join us as well. Now in saying that it's pretty frustrating because I know I tell you guys all of this stuff like I'm going to do this, this, this kind of video and it never really happens. This whole jumping from project to project thing or not following through with my ideas is something that frustrates me greatly. But it's also part of the INFP personality type, isn't it? Many of we INFPs get really inspired by something and we hyper-focus on it and we want to consume ourselves in every way, shape or form with the thing that we are interested in to only then be interested in something else. And that happens to me all the time. Trust me. And it's part of the reason why I feel like everything I tend to start, even if it's career-based situations, I just walk away from it and it's frustrating and I'm sorry if you've been looking forward to certain videos from me that I have not delivered. Trust me, I'm so frustrated with myself too. You know what other kind of person experiences that stopping and starting of projects all the time? People with ADHD. And just a week ago, you guys, I was diagnosed with inattentive ADHD. Now a huge disclaimer here, I have to really say this. Just because you have the INFP personality type does not mean you automatically have any kind of mental disorder that can correlate between the disorder and your personality type from the Myers-Briggs personality type indicator. Not only am I not really surprised that I have the ADHD diagnosis, but I'm also kind of relieved to learn that I do have it and that there are some certain similarities between the INFP personality type and my inattentive ADHD diagnosis. So you guys are probably wondering, okay, well, if INFP or any other personality type has nothing to do with any kind of mental disorder because the two are completely separate. Well then what is Lex meaning by INFP and ADHD then? From when I was a child, when I was about 10 years old, I had taken the MBTI test online and I had gotten the INFP personality type. I had then taken it again several years later, INFP, again another several years later, INFP, 
etc. So I had gotten the INFP personality type every time I took the test. What's even more interesting is that from when I was a very young child, I had experienced inattentive ADHD symptoms that went completely unnoticed by everyone around me, including pediatricians, my family, friends, teachers, etc. And even myself, because as a child, I don't know these things. I just think I'm who I am. Inattentive ADHD is incredibly difficult to diagnose, or at least it used to to be back in the 90s when I started displaying inattentive ADHD symptoms. These symptoms correlate quite well with the INFP personality type and also other personality types like ENFP and INFJ etc. But from my experience as a child I'd often get told by the teachers to snap out of my dream world and to focus better and to get my work done on time and what would happen is I'd have to have my teacher check my work before I would get to go out and play during recess and the reason why that is is not because I didn't try with work because I really did value school and this is with a the contradiction lies as someone with ADHD I actually did try at school and I did get really good grades at some points but during boring subjects I just I don't know what happened I just zoned out like and I couldn't help it but no one suspected that was ADHD because when you typically think of ADHD in childhood you think of a boy who has constantly bouncing off the walls or who is the class clown etc. The other thing that was really incredibly interesting was the things that I was really good at. I was really good at like I would top the class and like writing, music, performing arts, arts and I would go above and beyond when it came to doing my work. Like I would break my personal glass ceilings and I think the teacher was so super confused at the fact that I could take my creative arts from zero to a hundred Yet I could not, to save my life, focus on mathematics or anything that was boring. Which again is an ADHD symptom. I was also incredibly sensitive as a child. Any kind of comment or disapproval from either my peers, my teachers or adults would send me into a spin, into an emotional spin. And I would try my absolute best to avoid any kind of disapproval from others. Which relates back to my last video about rejection sensitive dysphoria. If you want, you can check it out. I've linked it above. Coming into adulthood, I have these same kind of experiences as I did as a child. It's just now... I notice them way more because now I have a family to look after. I have bills to pay. I have a life to do. And life is hard. But life is harder for someone who has ADHD, right? So for me, I struggle to pay bills. I can't, for to save my life, keep my house clean. I forget everything. I lose my keys. I lose my phone on a daily basis. I take my son to kindy late most of the time. I forget appointments. I get numbers mixed up and when it comes to money. Like, I just can't, for some reason, put two and two together. And then often what ends up happening is that I feel incredibly overwhelmed because I can't manage like I feel like I just can't manage my life properly it's like I've asked the question like yeah I get life is hard for most people it is like life is hard for everyone I'm certainly not denying that but for me I'm like is life supposed to be this hard though like what is actually going on and don't get me started on the starting and stopping of projects especially when it comes to choosing a career which I have always struggled with and now it's gotten to the point where it's like I don't want to pick anything because I'm afraid of picking the wrong thing because I don't want to waste any more of my time I don't want to waste any more of our money or like taking a student loan out to study when I'm just going to drop that thing in a couple of months time because I've moved on to something else like that kind of stuff freaks me out so I just I'm scared, I don't want to touch it. And then comes in the good old emotional dysregulation. Now, I must say that my emotional dysregulation certainly helps when it comes to establishing anything creative because it, I feel my emotions on such a really intense level and it helps me to really craft how I want to express myself because my life is about expressing myself. Like that's who I am. I'm the kind of person who who likes to talk truths on humanity and who likes to express those values that I have. With that 
comes a lot of intensity. And I'm sure many of you, as like INFPs, like not even having ADHD, can relate to that one. So all of this stuff frustrated me. And it interfered with my daily life and for me to be able to function and to provide for my family properly, not just like financially speaking, but emotionally. Like I don't want to be a pain in the ass to my family basically. And so I decided like, okay, I've been experiencing this from what I can tell my entire life. I've always felt different. I've always felt like an outcast. This is my experience. I've always felt like I have thought differently that there was something different about me, not bad different, just different. And that's when I decided to go to the psychiatrist and see what was really going on. So two years ago, I had a huge mental breakdown. I ended up going to respite, which is like a mental facility, like for people who may be experiencing suicidal ideation, etc. And I ended up getting diagnosed with emotional dysregulation, depression and anxiety. But that wasn't enough for me because I knew that there was something else like, okay, well, why am I experiencing depression? Why do I have emotional dysregulation? There must be another reason. So I had been on a mission in the past couple of months to really dig deep and to figure out what was going on. And I ended up with inattentive ADHD. I think for me is that I was so frustrated knowing that I was one of the most purpose-driven people that I know, yet I couldn't figure out how to express that purpose or how to kind of latch on to something that's going to stick and for me to really make a difference. Like I knew and I know that I have so much potential, yet never feeling like I'm living up to that potential or knowing how to and that incredible frustration. So knowing that there is a reason why has been incredibly relieving. I was tired of feeling like I'm falling short all the time. I was tired of trying to fit into the mold of society like a square peg fitting into a round hole. Didn't want to do that. I was tired of constantly questioning my intelligence and my ability to express my creativity because those two things make up who I am. I am both intelligent and creative but more so than any of that is that I want to learn how to harness this incredible hunter like brain that I have because my brain's different and needs a certain environment in order to thrive because you can't expect a fish to climb a tree just as you can't expect someone like me to fit into a mold that doesn't actually work I want to learn how to harness this incredible brain of mine so that I can succeed in every facet of my life whether it's in a career in my family life in my personal relationships and my professional relationships etc I mean if you just take a look at Michael Phelps he's said to have ADHD or Simone Biles Michael Jordan Mel B Jamie Oliver Jim Carrey Ryan Gosling probably Leonardo da Vinci Mozart Kurt Cobain John Lennon Albert Einstein, they had all said to have ADHD or there was speculation that the ones who had passed away and there wasn't any testing there for them could have had ADHD just by their entrepreneurial or philosophical nature. So I'm not a medical professional, but according to the DSM-5, the symptoms of inattention, so part of ADHD, would be make careless mistakes, lacks attention to detail, Difficulty sustaining attention, does not seem to listen when spoken to directly, directly, sorry, fails to follow through on tasks and instructions, exhibits poor organization, avoids and dislikes tasks requiring sustained mental effort, loses things necessary for tasks and activities, easily distracted, including un- unrelated thoughts, and is forgetful in daily activities. And the ADHD symptoms of hyperactivity and impulsivity are fidgets or taps hands or feet, squirms and seats. I do this a lot. That's my thing. I'll twirl my hair or I'll like if I'm sitting with my legs crossed, I'll like keep uncrossing them. You know, that's something I do. I try and keep it under wraps because I don't want people to notice. I don't think even I noticed until like now. <laughs> Leave seat in situations when remaining seated as expected. Experiences feelings of restlessness that can also be in the mind. Like this is the misconception again about ADHD, the hyperactivity. You'd expect it to be just bouncing off the walls or like having appearing to have high energy levels from the outside but the inattentive symptoms are that 
The person who has the inattentive symptoms has that restlessness in their minds, has difficulty engaging in quiet leisurely activities, which I don't, is on the go or acts as if driven by motor, talks excessively, blurts out answers, has difficulty waiting their turn and interrupts or intrudes on others. Now, I don't exhibit the hyperactive symptoms in the traditional sense, as I said, bouncing off the walls. It's mostly in my head. It's either my brain is so full of stuff going on all the time or it's completely blank. So it's like either one or the other, one or the other. And it can be really distracting and take me away from the things I need to concentrate on in life to get through the day. And the other non-typical thing that I experience as well, you know, when you think of someone with ADHD and the the surplus of attention that they have like if that person with ADHD for example sees something shiny and they're like oh look at that shiny thing over there and then they forget to focus on the thing that they were supposed to be focusing on for me it doesn't really happen like that It more happens in the sense that I will have all of these distractions going on around me and instead of paying attention to them, I notice they are there, but I get really irritated with them and I want to block them out, but they're interfering so much that it just fills my head. I'm like, stop. Like that, that's how it is. Most of the time it's just like, stop, stop. I can't focus. Stop. Everything needs, I just need to block everything out. And most of the time I need to to focus on things in silence or not have any outside uh, emotional distractions either like when there's emotional distractions I can't focus on anything like I'm hyper focusing on that emotion that is very troubling to me so yeah when it comes down to it my INFP personality type does relate to my ADHD diagnosis but they are not one and the same in saying that either because who I am is who I am and I would not change who I am for anything because I love how I go about things I think really outside the box whether that is to do with having ADHD or just being who I am like that's what I do and I love it and if it does have something to do with my ADHD well I don't see my ADHD as something negative like yes it comes with these plethora of challenges of course and I don't see having ADHD as quote-unquote having a superpower because it's not all it is is thinking differently having a different structured brain that responds to different stimuli versus a neurotypical person and there's nothing inherently wrong or right with it it's just different and I'm just on a mission to make my brain work in the environment that I can set for myself now I know my brain is just a bit different and I get to explore different methods that can work for me and I'm excited about that. I am not going to sit down and let my ADHD be an excuse to not finish projects or not pick a career that's right for me or to annoy my family with my emotional dysregulation and my my emotional intensity. That is not what that means. It means I get to work on those things and succeed in every facet of my life which I'm excited for. If you can relate to these symptoms that I exhibit, you know what, maybe it would pay to go see a psychiatrist and just have a wee chat to them about what you might be experiencing and you never know, you might end up with a diagnosis, you might not. Again, INFP does not correlate exactly with ADHD. They're not two of the same. They're two separate things that can have overlapping qualities. If you do have ADHD, please let me know as well down in the comments below and let me know of the challenges that you may experience or the things that work for you because I want to learn from you guys too. So now it's time for me to put this video away for today and please you guys be safe out there in this really odd time. Please look after yourself, look after your communities. If you see someone struggling like an old person or something, go and help them. Make sure you're like, well, though, go buy them some toilet paper. But let's band together as a community and look after one another. I think that's one thing that I want to take away from this issue. (laughs) So for now, I hope you have a good day, night, evening, morning, wherever you guys are in the world. And I'll see you guys all again next time for the next video, possibly in quarantine. Don't know yet. We'll figure this out, but I want to put content out for you guys to binge watch during this period of quarantine. Bye.